Hey everybody, it's Tyler here for fun, checking in with Team 334B Supernova Calamity here at the Haunted Event. These were your finalists at the uh, MOA Signature Event just a little while ago, and 334B's got an absolutely phenomenal robot. Of course, we'll be talking about everything that goes into the tri-ball cycle, talking about their uh, intake area, the catapult, their wings, slappers, all that and more coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Leon, let's start talking about on your robot with the uh, slapper and the wings and how all that's been uh, put into your robot. And tell us about some of the composition of what those mechanisms are. Yeah, sure. So this is our slapper, which is meant for shooting the 22 match loads over at the very start of the match. So um, as you already know that um, in the match, you start with 22 match, uh, match loads, which are these green tri balls. So um, this slapper is meant to um, go down and this tri-ball sits in this hopper here and then when it fires it shoots um, these tri-balls over across the field across the middle barrier so that they are um, so that they're on the side of the goal so that we can score them. Um, uh, slappers are interesting because they aren't actually um, they don't fire with the, the motor itself it's actually powered by rubber bands because um, as the gear turns to um, fire this the the gear has teeth, sh teeth shaved off which um, which, which allows the catapult to, um, to slip off the teeth of the gear and then the rubber bands just do all the work from there and shoot the ball across the field. How did you determine like, how much velocity you wanted to get out of the tri-ball like, when you were testing your robot? What made you come up with that as your final design? Uh, so we noticed that um, the slapper has a very high arc, which we found was helpful for getting over the opposing robots that may be trying to play defense on us or um, block us. So for for the actual power of the catapult, it's just a lot of um, trial and error. We knew how how far we wanted it to go, so we just tuned the power and actual um, the power of the catapult so that we knew how far to get over. And did a lot of tuning with the um, actual grouping of the catapult to know that because we wanted all the tri balls to end up in the same place, so that um, so that we could they would all be in the same place for us to all score at once. Talking about your uh, your wings and the implementation of those. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, we tuned the slapper to put all the balls in the same place, which ties into our wings, which are these C channels powered by these pneumatic cylinders, which extend and uh, to give the front of our robot more surface area so that we could just uh, drive in front of the goal and push all of the tri balls in at once. So we found at um, scrimmages and especially in skills that this was very important because we noticed that a lot of the tri balls ended up in in front of the goal so um, this was helpful to just quickly score all the tri balls at once. Shaban talk to me about the uh, blocker that you've implemented on your robot and then uh, some of the overall match strategy and, and robot design strategy as well too. Yeah definitely so as you can see we have a huge blocker on top this blocker is actually meant to uh, as Liam said before uh, block the match loads that the opposing robot might be trying to shoot over so we knew, knew that since the match loads are so high in value obviously there's 22 of them and they can each all be worth up to um, five points per try ball we knew that they were very important to prevent the opposing robot from um, match loading them over onto the offensive zone. So we implemented this very tall blocker. It's around 26 inches um, and in past scrimmages we've known that it's able to block some of the highest arcs that we've seen. Um, so this blocker pretty much looms over the opposing robot and you can see the sad face right on top which is meant to uh, reenact their expressions that they might feel uh, when we block them. Um, so this really ties into our strategy. We realized at the Mall of America competition that many robots were trying to prevent us from match loading um, and making sure that we weren't able to get our balls over. Um, so when we realized that match load blockers were really important and they were really successful, we decided to implement it and that allowed us to really play on the offensive side on the, of the field while still being able to switch to defense as quickly as possible, which we believe is one of our biggest um, strengths as being able to outdrive the opponents as quickly as possible is very important, especially when you're trying to play defense. Yeah, that's one of the things uh, a little while ago you were talking before the interview and I think the versatility your team brings is so valuable uh, on the field, so I love the thought process that's gone into uh, being able to play in both offensive zones uh, pretty much whenever is called upon it. Yeah. That's great. 
So very cool. Uh, as we continue on and talk about the uh, intake, Lily's going to describe that a bit more and what goes into it. Uh, so I'd love to hear more about it. Obviously, we have some compliant wheels on front that you're using on there. So talk to me about uh, how did you come up with this overall design for your intake uh, and anything that's maybe been iterated throughout the process too. Yeah, so the design is honestly pretty simple. It's just intakes into um, this piece of poly right here where the balls basically stay um, until we outtake them, usually into the goal or across uh, over the barrier. And then for the actual intake design, um, we tested a few different iterations of this. Uh, mainly, I think the main one that we tested besides this was rubber band rollers, and you'll see that at a few other spots um, at this competition. However, we found that these were just uh, more efficient and faster at intaking uh, tri balls, and also we didn't like how uh, the possibility with rubber band rollers of uh, getting entangled with another team's robot. And so we ended up just going with a simple flex wheel design for um, our intake. And then for the actual intake, uh, as you can see, it only intakes just right into here and doesn't uh, actually intake into any sort of catapult or other subsystem. And we found that uh, we didn't actually need it to intake into anything to shoot across the field, as we really only use our intake when we are on the offensive side, just to easily be able to manipulate tri balls and score them to the goal as fast as possible. Um, as uh, as we usually play on the offensive side because of our blocker, uh, yeah, we just found that just having an intake that could quickly and easily manipulate uh, the balls was just uh, the most uh, important thing that we needed for our team. And I noticed that you added uh, some polycarb on the bottom there as well too, and it kind of elevates the tri ball in the air. Was that something you, you initially had when you created your robot? Uh, we actually originally had um, a C channel, and then we also had a rubber band at some point there. But uh, we just found the polypol as it's um, it's not as flexible as let's say a rubber band, so it can just stay in the same place and stay stiff. But also uh, uh, when the ball goes in, it can go down a little to kind of compress uh, the tri ball a little bit so that it just stays in the intake better. Um, so we just found that works best for that particular design. Timothy, as we wrap up your robot, talk to me about your elevation mech and what's got, gone into that. Uh, where are you elevating from and uh, will that meta change for you at all coming from the MOA event to here we are at Haunted? Yeah, so we've always had this balancing mechanism to help us elevate on the barrier at the end of the match. Um, it's very useful as it's quite quick and it prevents the opposing alliance from match loading any travels at the end of the round, which we found at the Mall of America competition proved to be a major disadvantage because if, say, a team has a 15 second hang, um, it allows the opposing alliance to save their travels until the end and basically creates that window of opportunity. Um, and this being it takes one or two seconds to elevate on the barrier um, uh, in, in any situation. So, uh, it, yeah. Very cool. Uh, overall, I think this is a definitely complete package of a robot. So, uh, congratulations on your final appearance at uh, Mall. But I think you're looking for a bit more here at Haunted. So we can't wait to see yeah. how that performs here. Make sure you check out 334B uh, Calamity. Thanks for watching uh, Pits and Parks here on Fun. This video on Fun is brought to you by viewers like you, and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.